This is an etiquette seminar being held in a luxury hotel in Dusseldorf. The 17 participants want to learn all there is to know about good manners, including table manners. Practice starts with fake bread and plastic lobsters. Und dann knackt man mit der Hummerzange die Beine ab. Es ist ein Schneidewerkzeug und kein Schiebe. The knife is an implement for cutting, not pushing. That means it remains stable and you push the fork toward the knife. That makes less noise. Und das macht weniger Geräusche. We're at an age now when we often have to present ourselves in public, and good manners and etiquette are a must. It often happens that I host German business partners, so I want to be familiar with German customs and etiquette. What I didn't think about before was that I'm not just learning manners, but also how to give instead of taking and expecting things. The surroundings are well suited to the subject. The hotel is one of Dusseldorf's finest. The eight-hour course costs about 200 euros per person and covers various areas of social life. Barbara Rumpf, who runs the seminar, says etiquette means above all being faithful to the golden rule. It's about mutual respect. Good etiquette can make life more pleasant, that is, for other people. And when I make life nicer for others, I make it nicer for myself. That's what I think is most important. When Baron Adolf Knigge wrote his book on human relations in 1788, he could never have imagined his name would become shorthand for showing respect and good manners in Germany, especially as the book's 450 pages contain no hard and fast rules on etiquette. Literary scholar Karl-Heinz Göttert has studied Knigge's work. He says it's more a sociological treatise infused with the spirit of enlightenment. At some point a wave surged forward, or if you want to put it more dramatically, an avalanche. It developed into an avalanche that Knigge didn't live to see and didn't expect. Because, in a way, he wrote the first advice book and then came all the others, branding themselves as Knigge. In Germany, Knigge has long been synonymous with etiquette books. Nearly every bookshop here has works on manners that trade on his name. If you've mastered Knigge, you're ready for any occasion. The recommendations are constantly being revised. For Facebook, the rule is, it's not impolite to reject friendships. We all have a right to choose who we allow to look into our private lives. The German Knigge Society even has a rule applying to latte macchiato and cappuccino. Ordering these milky coffees after a meal signals to the cook or host that you haven't had enough to eat. All that has little to do with the historical Knigge. To be perfectly frank, these people haven't the slightest idea about Knigge. They should look at his works. He wrote eight novels and an examination of Immanuel Kant and literature. He made use of every possible form of writing in his day. We have an edition of his collected works in many volumes, and nobody really knows it. Worse, nobody reads it. Despite that, everyone in Germany knows Knigge, from television as well. There's a slapstick series, Kessler's Knigge, that shows how not to behave. Barbara Rumpf wants to spare her students experiences like that. So, they're putting what they've learned into practice in a five-star atmosphere. But many have their difficulties with the stringent rules. Rumpf says that's symptomatic of today's society. Because both parents work, nobody pays attention. Meals aren't eaten together anymore. Everyone eats alone in front of the TV or when it's convenient. And a lot gets lost, not just table manners, but also respect and politeness, behavior with others. So courses based loosely on Baron Adolf Knigge are in great demand in Germany, even 225 years after his book was published. And one thing is still true, good manners do have to be learned. <laughs>